All right, so um, just to let you know what we're going to be doing today, this is intended to be a high-level introduction to the functionality of Citavi. So without further ado, we will just get started. I just have a few slides to go over, and then we will dive right into the software. Okay, so just a little bit about QSR. Some of you already know us through Envivo. Um, so QSR has been the leader in QDA, qualitative data analysis software for 40 years. Um, so that's our Envivo product. And we recently acquired Citavi um, from a great group, Swiss Economic Software. Um, so we found that it's a very compelling product and we wanted to expand it globally since we do have a, a large global reach. And we're very excited. I'm in the Boston area and we have a lot of um, organizations in the US and Canada that are dying to get their hands on this software. So we're going to do our best to bring it to them as well as else, elsewhere throughout the globe. So we do have an extensive dealer network around the world. Um, and QSR also has a, a student placement software uh, called Sonia. So some of you may have heard of us through that. But today we're going to talk about Citavi and why uh, we find this to be such an interesting software, and you will as well, hopefully. Um, so, you know, in the academic writing, scholarly writing arena, there's just never enough time. You have tons of data that you need to tick through, and organization is a huge challenge. The writing and organization tend to be the areas that really bog people down. I mean, reading through references, citing work, it's the organizational piece of bringing it all together that um, we're finding that people would like a little bit of help with. Um, so what the software is intended to do is to free up the researchers to focus on the value add work that you do. Um, so you're able to use Citavi to save notes, ideas, uh, connections that you see in your in your data. Uh, you can create an outline for your paper and you're able to collaborate with ease through the cloud. So the benefits, which we're going to demonstrate today, are how this will enable you to publish faster, streamline co-authoring and collaboration, as well as develop your repository of information, and very important, reduce your risk of plagiarism through appropriate citation. So with that said, I'm going to jump out of here and go right into the software. Okay, um, <clears throat> just want to double check, okay. All right, so what you have here um, on my desktop, I'm showing you today, I'm going to demonstrate Citavi Web. Now there are uh, two different editions of Citavi. There is a desktop edition, Citavi 6, uh, and then there is Citavi Web. The primary difference between the two is the desktop edition is specifically for a Windows environment, whereas with Citavi Web, it is platform agnostic, and you can use it on your Mac or Linux or uh, in your Windows environment. And so that really enables a lot more collaboration. I know in our market, we have a lot of Mac users, so uh, this was a very important to have a web option for them. So for that reason, I'm going to demonstrate the web. And if someone has a Windows environment, you may want to have desktop. You can get a web and desktop bundle. Um, so you have additional options if you are a Windows user. But the web, we feel, is a streamlined, um, cleaner edition of the software. So we're very happy with that. All right. So um, when you open up your Citavi web homepage, what you see is a list of projects here. So uh, this one that we're going to be working with today, as well as some sample projects that come with the software. And you can sort them alphabetically, or if you have a lot of projects, you might just want to see your more recent projects and bring those to the top of your list. Over on the right, you see there's an RSS feed. Um, so that is where you can copy and search alerts from databases so that you can get notified on articles uh, that are published in the research 
topics that you are following. If you go up over to the right, here you're going to see a few items uh, that I want to point out, one being the language option. So I noticed uh, when I was looking at who had arrived, we have people from Poland, Brazil, Australia today, as well as the US and Canada. So you'll see there are different language options to work with up there, as well as this question box. So as you're working, if you have any questions, you can search through the manual. The manuals are very comprehensive for Citavi Web, as well as the desktop version. And you can ask specific questions or get right to these um, search links here. Down at the bottom, you see there's an opportunity to share your feedback, and we welcome that. So if you have ideas, uh, you think there's some functionality that is missing or great, let us know. We'd love to hear from you because the software is designed for you. Okay. <clears throat> Now, if we look over at this add-ins and settings, back over to the left side of the page up at the top, I just clicked there. Here you have some add-ins. Now there's a word assistant, which we will be working with, and you can download that there, as well as a Citavi picker, which enables you to grab sources or web pages, and we will be showing that in the demo. Um, the RSS feed is where you're gonna load those feeds. And then there's a citation. We're not going to really talk about that. It's pretty obscure stuff. We have all the major citation uh, types that you're going to want to use already loaded into the software. So you very unlikely that you would need to mess around there. OK, so going back to the project. OK, so if I wanted to create a new project right now, down at the bottom, I have an option to do that. Up here, I can give it a name. I'll call it Today's Project. And you can assign a color to it, as well as a description. And then it's going to go ahead and create that project for me. And I can select that project up at the top, where it says click here to open as well as I can find it over here listed underneath all of my projects. If I want to open it. Now, I'm not actually going to work in my new project um, because I've already loaded one with a few items rather than have you wait for the loads to come through. And I see I have a question here if I will be sharing the PowerPoint. Uh, yes, I will send that, uh, provide that to you. Actually, and so you all know, tomorrow you will receive an email from GoToWebinar that has a link back to this recording if there's anything specifically that you want to revisit. Uh, and if you have any colleagues who have, were registered and were not able to join today, anyone who's registered will also receive that recording. Okay. So moving along, um, so I have loaded, you see right here, there are four journal articles that I have already loaded. And the way that I did that is down at the bottom. There is a plus sign where you can load your references. You can find them on your computer or bring them in through various means, which you see here. But we're not going to spend time doing that since I've already done it. And the journal articles that I've brought in are listed here and what you see to the right under the references is the metadata. So what it does is it's going to bring in all the metadata that it has on hand um, and all fields for metadata are not showing just the ones that are already populated. So you have an opportunity to add to that. Okay. So, for example, if I go down to this next one, um, now this one, if I want to continue to fill this out, I'm going to go to the text itself. And in this particular instance, this is not actually a journal article. What it is, is it is a report which we, we, so I'm going to change the um, type of literature that it is to report or gray literature. And I can continue to clean this up. So 
typically I would, I could um, certainly select the title from over here and drag it over, but in this case, it's in all caps and I really don't want that because that will then appear in my citations with all caps and I don't want that to happen. Health risk of food fraud. Okay, so I can add the title there. And then if I want to add the author, uh, in this case, it's the GFSI. So I'm going to change that. And I could add the date and year. So I'll go ahead and do that here. Okay, so that is how you would go ahead and clean up um, that metadata that pulls in from your references, or in this case, doesn't pull in. All right. So along those lines, if I bring in this um, journal article and I don't have time to clean it up right now, I can assign myself a task. And the new task may be, there's a drop down menu. So what I might want to do is, examine whatever it is I, and I can create my own note here um, review metadata okay so I can add that task Okay, so now if I go, let's take a look at another text. So here's another article. And if I want to add any notes on the content as to what's in here, I might do an evaluation of it. Uh, and I might want to add a little note there. Uh, so I might say seminal work in the field. And so then I, you know, can go through evaluating the different references as I review them. Okay. So now at this point, we go back to my reference tab. But we can start building out categories as we want to start structuring the project and whatever it is that we're working on, whether it's a dissertation, a book, journal article, we can start creating categories to get organized. So to do that, I'm just going to click and I can start uh, with things like, I'm going to have a literature review. I want to add another one, new category. I'm going to have an introduction. Yeah, I need a section on China and let's add a section on Brazil. Okay, now I can move these around. I probably want to start with the introduction and China and Brazil, those might come under my literature review. So you see down the bottom, there are some arrows that make it very easy to change my outline here. So now I have something that I want to work with. So if I go back to my references, <clears throat> for all of these, I might want to, well, this one, I certainly would probably want to add to my lit review to the Brazil section. So I can drag that over. So now if I go into Brazil, you see I've pulled that reference into that section of my report. Okay, and just to review what I did there, if I pull up all my references, you see how there are these little dots to the left? You drag those to the area where you want to associate 
the reference. Okay, so I could add more, I could add all of these in general to my literature review. And then while I'm in these references, you see how I have them selected right now. Over on the right, I have, um, quotations here as well as tasks and I can associate those with any one of these references. So right now I'm going to create a task for all of these and someone's going to have to read these. And I can assign that. So if you're working in a group, I'm the only one in this project, um, but if I were working in a group, I could assign it to another person, as well as assign um, whether this is very important or not so important, and any notes with that. So this uh, software is definitely uh, very handy for collaboration, and you are able to keep people on track in the project. And I'm just going to mute myself. I apologize. I have a cold, so I keep clearing my throat. So bear with me today. I don't have a very strong voice. Sorry about that. Okay, so now going back, uh, we look at our literature review. We now have a few items in here. And you can filter those. Um, there are different ways that you can filter them, whether it's by author, et cetera. You'll find there are tools throughout, um, throughout the screen that are going to help you navigate. Let's see. You, there are also, I want to point out a few areas where you can search. So you can search through your categories search through your references, um, and then the actual loaded PDFs, you can search through those as well. So there are a lot of ways to search. And while I'm up here at the top where we search our PDFs, to the left of that, you see there's a little bell, and that is where you will find notifications popping up. So things like if you lose your internet connection, which means that your project's not saving, so that's something it's going to make you aware of, or if you've been loading a file, once it has fully loaded, it will let you know. Or if someone's asking you to share a project, things like that will pop up. And down the bottom here, you can see the last time that your project was saved. So that's also very helpful if you do see that you get a lost uh, connection, you'll see when you were last saved, see if your project's in danger. Um, all right. Now up at the top where you see this light bulb, this is where you can add a thought at any time. So I might have a brilliant idea and then I could explain what that brilliant idea is. Um, review manufacturing. Okay. And I can save that. All right, now next, um, also important for anyone who is working on a team, you see there is a chat area here. It's grayed out because I don't have anyone else uh, included on my project, but if I did, if they were online, I'd be able to see that they were online and be able to chat with them 
live uh, real time, which is super helpful when you are collaborating. <clears throat> okay, so now let's go back to our tech section. And I'm going to take a look at one of our journal articles and start working with this a bit. Okay, so um, here I'm going to choose to do some highlighting. And as I select this, I am able to save this as a quotation. And there are different types of quotations that we can create. So along the bottom, you see there's direct quotation, indirect, summary, it could be a comment or more. All right, so this I might want to save as a direct quotation. And I could make a core statement about it. So in this case, this uh, paragraph has to do with background and yaks. And I could add some text there about that, whatever I want to say. I can also reference the page number. So that was 106. Add keywords. I could add a category. So <clears throat> I might want to add this to, whoops, to China. Okay, so there we can start associating some of these direct quotes with our selected references. And anytime I look at my quotations, if I bring up all my quotations, um, this link here, I can click on the link and it will take me to the section of the PDF uh, where I pulled that quote. So that's handy to keep in mind to find things. Also, you can change what is displayed here. So down the bottom, you see these three dots. So right now I'm not showing who created or modified uh, this, but I might want to add that if I'm working on a team. So now we see that I created uh, this quote and when I did it. So I can also undo that if it's taking up too much room and there's no need for it since I'm the sole, sole uh, collaborator on this. Okay, so now let's visit the task area. <clears throat> so here I'm going to select a reference. Um, select all of these tasks. And once again, we can create new tasks at any time. So it's going to give you a list of the most common things that people might want to do. Like if you want to borrow the book, check it out or order the, it from your um, database, that it, whatever your organization works with, or examine and assess, uh, someone might need to do that. So you have a nice drop down list or you can customize it. All right. As I continue through the Wang article, here I might want to do some more quotes or summaries. Um, so once again, I just highlight that and I might create a summary here that says that 70% of yak jerky is other types of meat. All right, so I think you're probably starting to get the idea of how you can make use of that quotations uh, and summaries of your text as you're reading it. All right, now let's take a look at the knowledge organizer. So once again, up at the top, over to the left, moving to the right here, we have the knowledge organizer. And this is where you're gonna see a list of your quotes or your 
uh, ideas, um, any of your summaries, and you can also then tie those over to any items in your categories. So if I want to move my brilliant idea into my introduction, which will help with my writing, I can do that. So once again, I'm going to drag that over there. And I think I've already probably associated this background on, whoops, on Yaks with my introduction. I'm getting a little, a little mouse happy here. Sorry about that. Uh, it's already associated, I guess. Okay, so that's how you can continue to move those over to your categories. All right, so now what I want to do is talk a bit about the Satavi Picker. So that's something that you would download as an add-in. Um, and the Satavi Picker, once again, it's to help you draw things out of the databases you work with. So if you're working with things like um, PubMed or EBSCO, Google Scholar, you can grab items out of that with your web picker or anything you find on the web, web pages. Um, so let's explore a bit how we do that right now. So I'm going to go into Google Scholar and let's search for Yak jerky fraud uh, since that's what this project has to do with so if for example i want to pull this up so this looks like this could be an interesting article for me so what i'm going to do here is go to my satavi picker now i do need to be logged in and it appears i am um am i So I want to add this. And it's going to ask you if you want to import the additional 22 references cited or just the one you selected. Oh, dang it. That's not the project I want anyway. I want it to go into this project. So hopefully that will deposit into the correct project this time. <clears throat> okay, and what that's going to bring in right now is the summary, the abstract, all the metadata so that I can review it, determine if I wanna grab the whole um, article. So if you have access to these different databases, you'll be able to grab the whole article by logging into those databases. All right, so I might also have a web page. Um, so right here is a web page, and if I want to add that to my project, I can do that as well. Once again, using the picker, and I'm going to add that to my project. Add the web page as a reference. So now that should be saving into my project. All right. So let's just see if those have added. Okay, so I do see that we have some additional items in here. And if we go to the text, okay. So uh, if I take a look at this, we can see that this web page didn't 
uh, populate a whole bunch. So that is definitely an area where I can go ahead and add some more if I want to. So this came from the China Daily News, so I can go ahead and add things like that. Um, and you would fill that in over here. If we look at the other reference that I pulled in. Which was this one, I believe. Okay, so once again, you can add in who the author was um, and continue to fill this out, which this was something published by the UN, so I would add that information in there. And we will see the content, there will be an abstract of it, uh, and I could create an evaluation of it and any notes that I want to. And it will include, um, in the case of a web page, it's going to include the URL so that the reviewer can go back to that at any time uh, and draw more conclusions about the, about the reference. Okay, so now what I want to do is get right into the writing portion of working with Satavi. So with this, we're going to use the word editor. Um, and there's the thing called the Satavi Assistant, which once again, when I was showing you add-ons early on, and when we first started, that is something that you would load. Uh, and just to give you an idea as to how you would do that, you would go to insert, get add-ins, and you can do a search for Satavi. I already have it loaded. And then you'd see the Satavi Assistant, so you would go ahead and add that. All right, so to use this, we do need to be logged in. Okay, and so now you see a list of your projects. So I can go ahead and open up this project that I have been working with. And I can see my outline here as well as the references that I have brought in and I can start working uh, on my writing. So what I can do is I start writing something and I want to reference uh, one of these references. I can just select the reference. You see the little uh, arrow here? That is going to pull that reference into that area. And we can certainly change our citations um, formats at any time. So here we have citation styles if we go to the gear. And for example, I might want to use uh, how about the AMA, American AM? So you can tell I'm not a researcher. I forget the citation styles. Uh, oh, I know the APA. Okay, <clears throat> so I can expand this because some of these citation styles are pretty long. You can see there are a whole bunch in here um, and there's probably only a handful that are used regularly, but I'm gonna pick, I guess we'll go with this one. And that is the citation style that it will use. So I can go ahead and do my writing. I want to add some more. 
Whoops. Oh no. Sorry about that, guys. I have a bad habit of always trying to clean up my screen, so I close myself out of things very quite frequently. All right. So now we'll go back to our references. Hmm. There we go. All right. So I could add a reference here as well. Okay, and then once you have um, done some citing, you might want to change your citation styles, and that is also very easy to do. So we'll go back up to your gear and change your citation style. So maybe you want it to be a numeric style. So let's look at Vancouver. And so that's certainly much, much easier than doing it by hand. And once I hit this banner up here that says changes in formats, it will reformat my citations. And now I have a numeric type of citation. Okay, so that is basically all I wanted to show you today. Um, and I'm sorry for my froggy voice here, but that's just to give you an overview of how to work with Citavi. As I said, it's a very, um, feature rich software. So what you're going to find is that the more you work with it, probably the more questions you have. Um, but you will find that that help section as well as the manual, if you just do a quick search for the manual, whether you're using the desktop Citavi 6 or the Citavi for web, um, you will be able to really drill into exactly what you're trying to accomplish um, and get specific information there. So as far as purchasing options, we sell enterprise licenses for full organizations as well as individual licenses. Um, so an enterprise organization license would include both desktop and web options for any of the users. Uh, if you're an individual and you're working on a Mac, you would just want to buy the web um, edition of the software. Um, for the rest of you, you would, and all of the options will come with some cloud storage. So you can store projects in the cloud and you can collaborate in a cloud, whether you're using the web version or the desktop version, there is a cloud uh, that is included with that. So you can get subscriptions or you can get perpetual licenses. There are all sorts of purchasing options. Uh, so if you're buying something shy of an enterprise license, you would buy that directly from the uh, Citavi website. So with that, I want to, um, look at the questions. So as far as trials, we offer, if you go to the website, you can download a 30-day trial, which will give you an excellent opportunity to play with the software. You can also load projects from other reference management programs, um, such as EndNote. Uh, so you can bring some of, if you have existing projects that you just want to get a feel for how they play in Citavi, you can do that and not start from scratch for your trial. And um, someone's asking, where is the actual paper where you write? I'm not sure if they asked that before I went into my um, Word. So as far as right now, I'm writing on my desktop. But uh, so I'm not sure if that's your doing it in my Microsoft Word. And as far as the cost, there are a million answers to that question, just because there are so many different iterations, whether you're getting a subscription, a perpetual license, desktop only, desktop and web. Um, so your best option there is to go to uh, the website and take a look. And if you are an organization, I highly encourage you to check this out and encourage your colleagues to check it out because since we have um, recently been acquired, Satavi's been acquired uh, in, in, in some new markets, we are 
pricing it very aggressively for organizations um, because we know some of you have some other software and you might want to uh, bring on Satavi. So we want to make it as easy as possible for you to do that. So please let us know if you want to have further discussions and explore licensing options for your organization. We are happy to jump on a call at any time. Uh, so with that, I'm going to wrap it up. I hope that was helpful, and I encourage all of you to go check out the website and download a trial while it's fresh in your head. And as I said, um, there are also some, you, you will get a recording of this, but there are also some great training um, videos that you will get as part of the onboarding, uh, which I believe you should get right as you download a trial. So watch those videos. They are very concise and we'll get to the heart of the matter step by step. Uh, so it's a great course and it's free. So take advantage of that. I really appreciate all your time today and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, everyone.